Hello friends, welcome back, hearty welcome to you. As part of the complex numbers questions which we are looking into, which were given in previous IIT papers. So this is a question which we will look into. This was asked in 2006. We have been given that W is a complex number that is alpha plus i beta where beta is not equal to 0 and Z is not equal to 1 satisfies the condition that W minus conjugate of W multiplied with Z whole divided by 1 minus Z is purely real then what are the set of the values of Z? This problem we can solve it in two ways. First we will look into the way which is little bit difficult but it's based on fundamentals. Second we look into the way which we can do with the help of a property. So with the help of property it's very easy but if you at that time if the property is not striking to you so then the best way is to go with the fundamentals and try to solve it out. It takes a little bit time but certainly we'll get the solution for that. So let's go ahead and start now. Let us say that W is alpha plus i beta so I will go ahead and say that Z is equal to X plus i y. Now they told me that this particular complex number whatever we have w minus w conjugate by z divided by 1 minus z is purely real. What is the meaning of purely real? Purely real tells me that imaginary part of that is equal to 0. So let us say suppose this is equal to some val let us say this is equal to z dash. So then we know that imaginary part of z dash is equal to 0. So why can't I take z equal to x plus i y? I know w equal to alpha plus i beta. Try to simplify that and see what is the imaginary part. Separate it and equate it to 0. Maybe that should give me what are the sets of values of z. So that's the approach we are going to follow to solve this particular problem. So let's go ahead now. First we'll write down what is this particular complex number looks like when you try to simplify this w is alpha plus i beta minus conjugate of w is alpha minus i beta multiply that with z which is equal to x plus i y as we said divide that with 1 minus z which is equal to 1 minus of x plus I y. Now what I will try to do in the next step is I will try to separate the real part and the imaginary part from this expression. So let us see what will happen. We will just open it up. So it will be nothing but equal to alpha plus i beta. Maybe I need one more step for that. Then can I say minus alpha x alpha into x alpha x alpha into i y can I say minus i alpha y after that minus into minus i beta is plus i beta so can I say i into beta x after that i beta into i y that is nothing but i square beta y so can I say that is nothing but equal to minus beta y let me repeat that minus i beta into minus 1 into minus i beta into i y so which is equal to i square into beta y which is nothing but equal to minus beta y because we know that whole complex numbers is based on i square equal to minus 1 or square root of square root of minus 1 is equal to i. So let's go to next step now. In this step we will try to simplify the re we'll separate the real part. So what is our real part? We have alpha then we have alpha x so I'll write down minus alpha x then we have minus beta y so that is minus beta y this is my real part what is imaginary part imaginary part is i into i into imaginary part starts with i so i have beta there then i have minus of if i take i it is alpha y then i have i beta x this is plus there as so can i say plus beta x 
this is a complex number which we have in the numerator now I go to denominator and try to do the same operation there separate them I will have 1 minus x minus of i into y now you know that whenever you have a complex number in denominator you want to bring it to numerator you have to go to its conjugate and you have to put down the modulus of that or can I say z conjugate is equal to z divided by mod z whole square this logic we can use or you can just multiply with its conjugate both numerator and denominator both of them will yield you the same result so let's go to the next step the next step will be alpha minus alpha beta sorry it's alpha x alpha minus alpha x oh oh I'm dumb sometimes don't worry about that minus beta y plus i into beta minus alpha y plus beta x this whole thing I have to multiply with 1 minus x plus i y that is the conjugate of that and in the denominator what will come in the denominator we will have 1 minus x whole square plus y square so this is our final equation from this we have to search where we have imaginary part equal to z we have to find out the imaginary part and after that we have to equate it to 0 that is what we have to do so let's go ahead and do that when I go to the next step now I know that I am interested only in the imaginary part so I am going to look at only imaginary part and I know that when I have imaginary part equal to 0 denominator when I multiply it becomes 0 so I will take from numerator only where I will get i so you can see that this this whole thing multiplied with this thing is imaginary i into there right so I will write down that y into alpha minus alpha x minus beta y this is the imaginary part then I have second term multiplied with the first term here that is also imaginary part that is nothing but 1 minus x multiplied with beta minus alpha y plus beta x this is the whole imaginary part we have which should be equal to 0 so this is what we are going to work on now and try to find out so let's go ahead and simplify this now next step we'll try to we'll try to open the brackets and I have alpha y minus alpha x y then I have minus beta y square plus 1 minus x into so I can multiply with 1 and write it as it is beta minus alpha y plus beta x after that I have to multiply with minus x the whole term second term so it will be nothing but minus beta x then I have plus alpha x y then only one term is left out that's nothing but equal to minus beta x square this is equal to 0 now let us see are we lucky and we can cancel something here I have alpha y alpha y cancelling out alpha x y alpha x y cancelling out then I have beta x beta x cancelling out so that means we can write it we'll go and leverage this particular place and we will say that's nothing but equal to what is left out if you understand is nothing but beta minus beta x square minus beta y square is equal to 0 uh, can I take beta common there and can I say x square plus y square minus 1 equal to 0 they already gave me beta not equal to 0 if you look at the question that means x square plus y square equal to 1 but what is x square plus y square x square plus y square is nothing but mod z whole square mod z whole square equal to 1 that means mod z is equal to 1 so 
what we can say then? We can say that mod z equal to 1 and also they gave me in the problem only that z not equal to 1. So, all the set of values of z will satisfy these two conditions that mod z equal to 1 and also z not equal to 1. So, let us recap this and summarize this lengthy way of dealing with this. Once we you look into the other other solution, you will say that this is too lengthy. Okay, right. Anyway, we have been given W equal to alpha plus I beta. We have been told that where beta is not equal to 0. And they also told us that Z not equal to 1 satisfies the condition that W minus W conjugate into Z divided by 1 minus Z is purely real. Whenever we have been given that it is purely real, that means the imaginary part of this whole thing, complex number, is equal to 0. So, since we have been already said that it is purely real, we want to go ahead with it. Now, try to simplify this complex number by taking z equal to x plus i y and substituting w equal to alpha plus i beta and w conjugate equal to alpha minus i beta. Simplifying that, we understood from whatever the complex number we got, its imaginary part is nothing but y into alpha minus alpha x minus beta y plus 1 minus x into beta minus alpha y plus beta x, which should be equal to 0 because we have been told that it is purely real. So, can we equate that to 0? We simplify. We get that beta into x square plus y square minus 1 equal to 0. But given beta is not equal to 0, now you know why it is given beta not equal to 0. That means x square plus y square equal to 1. That means mod of z is 1. So, set of values will be mod of z equal to 1 and z not equal to 1 because in the problem only it has been given that z is not equal to 1. So, that is the first way of solving it. Now, let us go ahead and with the second way of solving the same problem. Okay, now let us look at the second way of how to solve this problem in a very quickly quick manner. We have been given that the particular complex number is purely real. If a complex number is purely real, that imaginary part is 0. From that, what can we say? If a complex number is purely real, then its conjugate also will be equal to itself because let us say z equal to x plus i y and okay let us say z dash equal to x dash plus i y dash. We have been told that this is purely real. That means this i y dash part becomes a 0. That means z dash only. Now go to conjugate of z z dash that is also equal to the same. So, can I apply that particular property which will say that z dash is equal to conjugate of z dash. That happens whenever a complex number is purely real. So, that means now I can go ahead and find out its conjugate. I can equate them and I should be able to get a condition. So, let us write it down. We know that z dash is w minus conjugate of w into z divided by 1 minus z. According to the condition whatever we just learned, this is equal to the conjugate of the given complex number. That means it will be, you know that individual complex numbers you have to make them conjugate. So, w conjugate minus conjugate of w conjugate is w and multiply with that z conjugate divided by 1 minus z conjugate. Now, we will try to do cross multiplication and try to find out a solution. So, we do cross multiplication. Our next step will be, we will have w minus w conjugate into z and multiply that whole thing with 1 minus z conjugate which should be equal to w conjugate minus w into z conjugate and multiply that with 1 minus z. Seems to be some terms will cancel because a little bit of gut feeling there. So, let us open it up w minus w into z conjugate minus w conjugate into z plus w into z into z conjugate. You know that that is nothing but equal to mod z whole square and it is nothing but mod modulus of z whole square. Similarly, on the other side we have w dash minus w conjugate minus w conjugate z minus w z conjugate plus again w into w into mod z whole square. Let me check this little bit confusing. W minus W z minus W dash into z plus W dash into z square is W dash minus W dash z minus W z 
dash plus w square now let us see can I cancel anything here let me check what can I cancel here I know minus w z dash minus w z dash will go away w dash z w dash z will go away okay what is left out is only four terms let's write down those four terms what are those four terms we have w minus w conjugate plus I can take here mod of z whole square common I will have w conjugate minus w is equal to 0 now can I take that out and say w minus w dash or I say w conjugate into 1 minus mod z whole square equal to 0 we know that w minus w dash is not equal to 0 why it is not equal to 0 we can check it right now alpha plus i beta minus of alpha what is w conjugate minus alpha minus i beta that is nothing but plus i beta is not equal to 0 now that means 2 i beta which the already given as beta not equal to 0 that means this whole part is not equal to 0 I hope you are okay with that what I am saying is I can take w minus w conjugate common but that's not equal to 0 because when you simplify that you see that that's equal to 2i beta they already given as that beta not equal to 0 now you know why they have given that so that means mod z whole square is equal to 1 which implies mod z equal to 1 so the set of values will have condition like mod z equal to 1 and also z not equal to 1 all those set of values satisfy this particular condition whatever is given so that's one interesting example which was asked in 2006 thought of that sharing that with you so I'm just learning and I'm trying to share it with you I'm not an expert but I have interest to learn and I'm just learning and I'm sharing it with you so feedback is always welcome thanks for your time and support bye for now